Hi, everybody. Let's do a premiere draft. Okay. Great card to open. Flamethrower Sonata is playable and sometimes sculptures look just like a a nine nine. <laughs> I mean, if you can discard uh, one of the Prismari spells to make a treasure, and then just exile it. That's a pretty that's a pretty sweet deal. And the fact that it's either a removal spell or a creature makes it, I think, just enough better to take over. I'm not even sure what what my my other pick would be. Maybe just like an Umbral Juke or Incaster. I think Incaster when it's good, like it can, it can be really good. But Torn Sculptor is the pick. <laughs> Okay. I actually think Maelstrom Muse is uh, better than Heated Debate. Yeah. The, the upside on this card is just ridiculous, out of control. They have Judgment. Oh. Hmm. This this is a good card, but I probably just want uh, that expanded anatomy here. Expanded anatomy keeps me open. Whereas, I mean, even if I take a good good white card, it could end up just being a waste of a pick because it doesn't really match with either one of my cards. We got past back-to-back -back rats. So somebody's gonna have a, a wrath tribal deck going. And hey, I'm, I'm happy for them. But we are working our way to a very solid deck here. It may just be that I have a strong color preference for Prismari, I'm not denying that. I do find myself kind of leaning into these colors quite a bit, but I mean, like, what do you want? I opened a Torrent Sculptor and I got past Maelstrom using two. Excellent playable cards. So here I'm going to take the Pledge Mage over the 3-1 Pump Spell, and now cards are a little bit drying up. So we did see a white card. I mean, you can't really move into Lore Hold here, I don't think. But I mean, based on this, it looks like Silver Quill is just wide open, right? Man, this is rough. Am I just supposed to take like a Lash of Malice here? I don't know. I'm gonna take Defend the Campus All right, this is a little bit better. Now there's a Reflective Golem. I could try to go off with Reflective Golem as well. And I have two four drops already. This generally isn't the deck that wants it. All right, let's just take Introduction to Prophecy. All right, easy Prismari campus over an enthusiastic study, I think, yeah. Still think that's correct. All right, well, that's a gift. That's cute. Frost Trickster or Pledge Mage. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's the right pick, but Wow, Silver Quill is just so open. Well, it doesn't get any better than getting two split rares.
No, we're, we're just taking the rare. We're taking the bomb. There's nothing else in here. I mean, there's another Prismari campus. There's nothing. There's nothing, nothing worth, worth discussing. I think probably burying books is a bit too important to pass up. Okay, now we have Pigment Storm. Like, honestly, one, one thing I find myself thinking is, do I really have like a archetype bias? And to some extent I do, but I don't feel like I de deliberately force anything when I draft, and yet, I uh, find myself in this situation quite often where I'm just, I've been disproportionately Prismari this, this whole cycle. So pop quiz over spirit summoning. Probably want just a pop quiz here. Okay. I do like creative outbursts. This is one of those cards that you can exile to make your torn, torn sculptor massive. I'm not copying too many good things. I'm gonna take an explosive welcome because with Maelstrom Muse, I think it's actually not only playable, but like actively good. So the current count is uh, seven nine with seven instants and two sorceries. This one and the white one are so weird. Like haste on an instant speed spell is about like as useless as uh, a spell that gives your creature vigilance at instant speed. It doesn't make sense. Like. It might as well be a sorcery at that point. I mean, it's still better to make it not a sorcery, but it seems strange. So do I want an access tunnel for a deck like this? Probably just want another Expanded Academy. But it was a close pick between the Expanded Academy and a Prismari campus. I think taking another campus uh, would have been reasonable there because I do like two campuses and decks like this. No, no more, no less. Because it lets you scry to your top end. So when it's later in the game and you're just getting flooded out, it can come in very handy. Uh, just a random creature. I still think I don't I don't want this not even with 10 spells. Uh, no, I just want another pledge mage. I don't really like Vortex Runner all that much to be honest. So again, we have a two-pack deck. So far it's very strong and it can only get better from here. Um, easy expanded anatomy. Sure. At a minimum, it'll make the sculptor a 3-3. I always forget that it's half the number of counters. So if you exile like 
uh, Creative Outburst, which is the most more likely thing you can exile. It's a 5-5, five, five, which is still really strong. All the expanded anatomies. Uh, there's also start from scratch. So I have two first days of class, pop quiz, arcane subtraction, two teach by examples, and it's quite a few things that can get spells. I'll take another one. Nah, you know, it's more, I think I'm, the more responsible pick is to take start from scratch, but I just got another one, yuck. But there's also one of the most fun cards to play with and also to teach by example. <laughs> Five mana, kill two, you know, kill two things, draw two cards. That's phenomenal. Yeah, this is the one that gives vigilance instant speed. It's just, it's a strange bird. Enthusiastic study or fractal summoning. <laughs> I'm going to take enthusiastic study because it combos with Maelstorm Muse. I'll find something to cut. Bless me, pardon me. Yeah, just Quandrix Pledge Mage, I think. How many wizards? I have eight wizards. No, I think I'm, I'll be fine with card draw. I just want the Pledge Mage. This card's gonna be just ginormous in, in the deck. Yeah, this is where I'll take the campus and cut the Archway Commons. Gosh, I have some weird, weird bad allergies. Sure. Definitely don't want Tom Shredder. So this is 25 right now. I definitely want 17 lands with explosive welcome and two creative outbursts. Uh, opt, opt might actually make it. Arcane subtraction is just like a better first diff class and they both do the same thing. Uh, it's a great last, last playable. I gotta remember I have that card in my deck. This, I mean, this card can just win you games out of nowhere, either by removing Flying Blocker or pumping one of your creatures. Grant that you can only do it at sorcery speed, so you can't like uh, use it as a combat trick. But we have two expanded anatomies, one start from scratch. I would have gotten another one anyway, so I, I kind of regret not having three expanded anatomies. But this deck's just an A, like. It is very strong. Probably cut opt. Expressive iteration is like a much better opt. It's cute as a cheap Quandrix uh, Pledge Mage trick as a cantrip. And it does let Prismari Pledge Mage attack, but um, like, what would I take out? I want both of my Enthusiastic Studies. I want both of my Arcane Subtractions. Um, I have a bunch of Lesson cards. So this means one cut. Double Teach by example is also pretty sick with Maelstrom use because it makes it cheaper and more realistic to copy things like pigment storm sooner even copying uh burying books like you can get the discount by casting this on an attacking creature or you can make this three and for five mana you can copy your burying books 
get rid of two non-attacking creatures. So I almost feel like maybe the weakest card is like a waterfall aerialist. I have decent flyers already. And again, I, I don't really care about my creature, co creature count in the deck. It is cool because it has protection, but I think my other cards are just better with the way that this deck is built. I could be wrong, but let's see. It's fine. I have a turn two removal spell. Not not the greatest opening hand. I definitely want at least one Prismari Pledge Mage in my opening hand on average, but I can manage with this and I have a deal four, which is great. And um, we can just go Quandrix Pledge Mage next turn. That's also a thing. Flamethrower Sonata is sorcery speed. Something to keep in mind. Well, now we can do the thing. But I still think right now we just go Quandrix Pledge Mage. So if I toss this seven, three, three, this becomes a five, five. Oh God, I hope, I hope he blocks here. I doubt, I doubt that will happen, but let's see. I'm gonna go pop quiz in case I hit my land. So he doesn't get to return a creature, or he does. When, ah, he tossed this with Thrill of Possibility. All right. That is a legit play. So I'm, I'm thinking what I want to do here. I have five mana, but I don't have a good way of using five mana. I guess my best play is to go Maelstrom Muse. I can also like get a Mercurial Transformation with Fantastic, with a Enthusiastic Study, make the com Combat Professor a 1 1 for a turn. I don't know. I think uh, I'm better off playing Maelstrom Muse. If they have removal, so be it. But if not, then we can have a very explosive turn next turn. If I get a land, I can play this and kill both these things. So he needs to not have removal. <laughs> okay, that, pl that plan's done. <laughs> So now actually a good draw would be teach by example because I can bounce both. Bouncing Pillar Drop Rescuer is not a problem right now because he's got no creatures in the graveyard. And he's actually thinking about maybe not attacking here. Eh, never mind, he's attacking. <laughs> he was just thinking of uh, what to get. Okay, so I did get the land. He's also tapped out. I think I want to go expand an anatomy. So if I go enthusiastic study now, this gets this this is 10 damage. And then if I get a land, I can just finish him. I, I like that plan. And then Intrato Annihilation to get anything big out of the way. I mean, honestly, I could have done it like he's, he's really not jumping there. I could have cast it uh, 
after attacks were declared or given him a chance to block, see if he wanted to chump. I don't think he was chumping there, to be honest. But it was not the correct uh, play order by my on my part. So even if he has like a teach by example, and this becomes a four power, four power, that's still only eight. That doesn't kill me. He would need to have, I don't know, two combat tricks. All right, well, that's a start. Okay. I really need to get a land here just to finish this. Deals five to any target. Nice. Okay, so I think, yes. All right, good stuff. Good stuff. GG. One down. One, one thing to note is I usually play at higher uh, rankings. Like if I really play a lot of best of one, I usually end up like around diamond or mythic, depending on how much I, how much time I put in. Getting to mythic really, it's more about like putting in the time more than anything else. Yeah, of course your your win rate counts, but it's really not that difficult to to break top thirteen hundred. I don't think it is a bit trickier getting into like the top 500 than the one the top 100 and so on and it gets incrementally more difficult but it's certainly not impossible this is actually a keepable hand there's plenty of things i can find that would work even like a shock would teach by example uh can stabilize early if something goes wrong but with explosive welcome in hand i do kind of have an incentive to Turn this into a treasure. If I don't have anything else to do, this guarantees I can cast this by turn seven, sometimes earlier. And I have two of these anyway, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, so I'm actually going to do it now. Okay, so pop quiz or expressive iteration. I'm gonna go pop quiz because if I get another land, yes. Nice, so now we can copy expanded anatomy. I think we're just on that plan next turn. Actually, never mind. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's a bad idea. That's, that's wishful thinking. All right, so we got another creative outburst. Before I play a land, let me just think about this. Let's play expressive iteration first and see what we find. All right, so we can play the island and let's play the spectacle mage. Back-to-back -back lower hold decks, right? Okay, okay. All right, well, this one's a no-brainer in my opinion. So now I can definitely cast a creative outburst. I wish this was Maelstrom use. I can reduce the cost of explosive welcome by six, but it's only the Spectacle Mage. By the way, about Spectacle Mage, people forget that you can also pay an extra mana that you don't have for cards like Elemental Summoning. Yeah, I'm not, definitely not blocking. No way. Sure. 
sure. Hmm. Bit expensive, but I still think it's the right play just because we're winning in the air. Interesting. So we, do we want, what do we want? He's at eight. Probably just want a pigment storm because we can, yeah, we can copy it with teach by example. And that represents a ton of trample damage. And we don't need any more lands. Yeah, because I have six, that's gain. Nah. Not quite game, but still very close. I mean, this is going to be just the nuts right now. Ah, oh, never mind. No, I'm one mana short. Ay. No, I can't do it anymore. Now it's now it's five again. So then, interesting. What's the play? Like, I can just kill him with explosive welcome and shock in a couple of turns. So maybe we just copy burying books and throw both of these back into the back into the library well like I guess I can also play pigment storm and shock no I think I'm on the copy burying books plan. So no damage, both of these go on top. If I was playing against a black deck, I wouldn't do that because there's risk of uh, discard. But in this case, there's very little risk for me and yeah, if that's all they're doing, then I think it's I think it's over. They wouldn't even if they have the exile card, I can still kill the effigy and put them to one and then finish with pigment storm. So I think I'm covered. G G's. All right, let me make sure I don't screw this up. Five damage. All right. And we were one land short away from being able to cast Pigment Storm as well. So that was pretty cool. Two down. All right, that's super easy keep with uh, Electrolyze. Pop quiz. Three lore hold decks in a row. The meta has shifted. Oh no. <laughs> what do you got? Lightning helix. Stone bound mentor, sure. Uh, 
I'm going to offer the trade here. Again, it's an instant speed card, but I got to cast it pre combat. Otherwise, Flash Mage can't attack. Uh oh. See, the cool thing about him is like for three mana, this is almost like a tap target creature spell, right? Because you can cast him, he's got haste, and you can make one creature not able to block. So I still don't think it's a good card, but I believe it's more playable than people make it out to be in the right type of deck. So with an Electrolyze in my graveyard, this is only, this is an insignificant card. So I don't think I'm gonna attack because I'm casting a Maelstrom Muse here. He's got um, the Expel Mana up as well. It's a white common, instant speed, exile, target, tap creature. So that's another reason to tap out here and just Pick up shields. All right, well, at least I can trade here if they want to attack. No attacks. All right, all right. Hmm. I wish it said until until the end of your next turn. That way it's it would be a way more relevant card. So now I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to do really. I mean I can pop quiz or I can keep up burying bucks. I'm gonna keep up burying bucks because if he attacks and if he's got like a pump spell or something, I'd rather reserve the ability to get a two for one. But he can also just make the whole monitor unable to block Pledge Mage. If he wants to use his mana on that. This guy does not really belong in uh, and a lore hall deck. I, I don't buy that argument. All right, so now we can make Torn Sculptor. We can make a big Torn Sculptor. So let's play the tap land. Torn Sculptor is a 4-4 flyer. 5-5 five, five, rounded up. Ah, rounded up. Never mind. Make that 5-5. Make that five, five. Rounded up or down is actually a pretty, pretty significant difference. So he's got one creature he can exile. Doesn't seem that exciting to me. This is very often just a, just a dead card. So let's go pop quiz. That makes Pledge Mage able to attack. Expanded anatomy. I'm going to keep up enthusiastic study here. If nothing happens, I'm just gonna play Spectacle Mage because that'll make my Creative Outburst cheaper next turn. And that really wouldn't do much though because I have seven mana, like if I have eight, I don't have a two mana spell, so that really doesn't do anything. I 
this can affect the clock so because it either uh, it either pings or gains a life okay so you want to just uh, infuriate so let's see so that becomes this is plus three plus two so they're gonna still trade so it's a two for two all right i'll i'll take that i get to learn it's not too bad i mean you can never be too set on removal so I'm gonna just hedge in case creative outburst is not enough to stop whatever else they play. Now I have two removal spells and a five five flyer. So this is a good spot to be. These come to play tap, right? They don't. Okay, but they don't have haste. This is just lethal, right? Uh, this, the, why did I think this has flying? Doesn't this thing look like it has flying? I just realized that that is not the case. I mean, whatever, it's still lethal next turn. But I sort of got the whole time I thought this thing was a flyer. That's just... <laughs> it's uh, good to know, good to know. And now, I mean, even if he has a mana tithe, he's not getting out of range of this unless... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I hope he doesn't mill a land to gain a life. Yeah, because now it's just, that's game. Ridiculous, three down. Like it's still good value because it has ward. I think without ward, it would be mediocre card, mediocre to bad. Ward, I think makes it like, again, between both sides of this, makes it a decent card. But it is a bit too situational now that I look at it. I mean, this not having flying makes it significantly worse. I just, you know, they got me with the picture. I'm not gonna lie. It looks like some cosplay things going on there. But that's actually one of the reasons I, I took Waterfall Aerialist out because I thought that this kind of does the same thing, except no, it doesn't. The only flyers I have are Spectacle Mage and Muse, right? Nothing else? Yeah, nothing else. Which... Ah, and also Frost Trickster. Yeah, I mean, three three flyers is fine with a bunch of uh, expanded expanded anam anatomies, like your, your set. I'm not going to play iteration here. I know I can I can kill this with electrolyze and ping my opponent. Electrolyze is actually really good. Uh, card against Needle Thorn Drake, it's just super efficient.
and now we actually get to kill both those things. I will do it on my turn because I don't want to run into any shenanigans here. There, oh, that's terrible. This card, this card's awful. I guess we have to play expressive iteration. Uh, I want the removal spell. This goes back into the library. This gets exiled. This gets played. And Prismori uh, Pledge Mage gets played to block the mathematician. And then we can either bounce this or we can fry it with Torn Sculptor. We would have to exile Explosive Welcome, but then um, Yeah, then, then then we can catch up. We can also just expand that anatomy and make this a 5-5, five, five, so it blanks. Well, no, no now I kind of want a Torn Sculptor because I want to hit my land drop also. So you have you, this only lets you discount this card an instant or sorcery. So, and it's one red, one blue. And if we get a land, we can find a frost trickster, which would also be good. So I think that's the plan because we want to discard explosive welcome and find a mountain basically to have our second source of red for Vilda. What a terrible name. Yeah, and I'd, I'd still rather discuss uh, discard explosive welcome rather than burying bucks because I don't even know when I'm casting this. I do have a maelstrom use, but I'm so behind that I'm more worried about just dying. So we've found the land, but it's not the land that I want. This this is one case where you get kind of punished for playing two tap lands. However, if there's no removal spell here, we more or less stabilized. And even if this is an expanded anatomy, like it's not the end of the world and he can't cast this, he doesn't have enough mana. So no attacks and if I play Nasari, he's just gonna in intro to Annihilation. So it's six mana. I probably just want to play Pledge Mage and Frost Trickster. So let's tap down the Kelpie Guide. You may want to untap a land. That, that would be an interesting line of play. I'm not sure what he could have here for four mana. He could have the revelation or you could just be trying to scare me, but I'm not attacking anyway. I'm just going to go Quandrix Pledge Mage and then set up for maybe a double spell turn next turn with this expanded anatomy and something else. Would be nice to get Teach by example. Teach by example would actually be a cool draw next turn as well. Hmm. So we definitely want to play Expanded Anatomy on Frost Trickster. And attack with everything. That's a huge turn. That's 10 points worth of damage and he doesn't have any good blocks. And we have a Burying Box in case something goes wrong. And that was a huge turn. So he's one land away from being able to, to use this as a tapper on my Frost Trickster. And he can actually do it now. Yeah, he, he found his land. 
He also has access to nine mana, which is kind of scary. Uh-oh. I think we got to bounce that. Let's see, seven. So I can go Pledge Mage and bury in books. I'm just going to bury that in books right now because that also gives me a good attack again. And it doesn't really matter whether he uses Kelpie to block or not, because he either has a double block on, on the Pledge Mage or he taps down Frost Trickster. And I actually will offer the trade for both of these, I think. Although I don't have a spell next turn, I'm not guaranteed a spell next turn to, to attack with both Pledge Mages if he eats the Quandrix Pledge Mage, but then he also Take seven, and he basically has to use Intro to Annihilation on Frost Trickster. I think I still attack with everything. Okay, that's fine by me. You're still taking seven or you're chumping. I think the better play there would have been to double block uh, Quandrix Pledge Mage. If I'm my opponent, I probably would have gone that, taken that line. And now I need to make a decision. Do I want to scry on upkeep with the hopes of finding like an arcane subtraction? One of my two teach by examples, just anything to let these two attack. Because I mean, it depends on what he plays here, but he's really threatened. If he's not casting uh, intro to kill this and something else, like he's facing lethal and there are enough cheap spells. There's shock to arcane subtraction, so there's 10. So I have a, like a 20% chance, right? So this is, so I have seven lands and this is four and one, that's five. So I have two, I'll have two mana. So then I have a one in five chance of potentially winning. If that's the case, I might just play. I might just cry and upkeep. Like right now, I will scry and upkeep. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Ah, no, never mind, because he can he can tap. Yeah. It's not worth it. He can tap my flyer and then it's not lethal, right? It wouldn't be lethal. Yeah, he's only taking six in that case. These would trade, potentially, depending on what I find. But if I, if I find a shock, then he's still dead. I'm not going to do it, because if, if I top deck like a teach by example, it wouldn't be a good, good spell to cast just to get an attack in, I don't think. Let's just see what we get. See, I gotta teach by example anyway. So let's see. Seems good. Like he's this means that he has to trade. And now shock is lethal and uh, the two creative outbursts are lethal as well as like a pigment storm. So I don't think we're losing this game. I really don't. No, I'm definitely going to scry and upkeep. I 
because another teach by example, uh, arcane subtraction or shot just wins me the game out, right? Really cool, really cool card design. Okay. And having drawn a land here, I even I have even more incentive to scry and upkeep because now also pop quiz and enthusiastic study wins me the game. So Do I want to plead this is just another attacker right now? No, I don't think so. Come on. That would be terrible. <laughs> Five by zero. Sure. So here we see the benefit of not playing this till much later because he used this premium removal spell on uh, on my 2-4 flyer. I mean, not that it matters. Um, nine, seven, nine. I don't think there's any weird counter spell that you need to pay two mana for to counter, but there's no reason to keep my land in hand there either. If this is whirlwind denial, it'll be bad, of course, but it is not. Four down. That's that's the secret. That's the secret to health and happiness. Cypriot Frau Frau mini cookies. These sound German. Frau Frau sounds German. Or Fru Fru, I'm sorry. Superb quality biscuits. God bless Cyprus. I love living here. People are wonderful. The food is amazing. Move to Cyprus. If you're living, if you're living in Brooklyn, if you're living in New York right now. Just moved to Cyprus. <laughs> um. Probably just still want an expanded anatomy. It gives me an attack next turn. And gets me closer to Ovilda. I mean, sorry. So uh, now there's no reason to play an untapped land because we're probably just casting expanded anatomy and attacking here. I hope they don't have a removal spell. If they do, eh, it is what it is. Still, I'd, I'd rather they not use it on the, uh, no, sorry. So with the opponent being stuck on lands, I'm just gonna punch this right now. If he doesn't have another one of these, and this lives, even one trigger 
You get one spell off this, it's already a huge advantage. Because then it becomes a 5 5 and it's outside the range. Definitely no blocks. Sure. All right, let's see what we spike off the top. Sudden breakthrough, huh? So this could give me, this This does give me a treasure and this does make it a 5-5. Five, five. So that would leave me with four mana so then I can go express iteration or keep up to arcane subtractions. I'm, I'm on that plan. There's not much that can go wrong here with two arcane subtractions in my hand. I'm probably gonna take like maybe, I might take some damage, but I don't think it's gonna be more than like three, you know, two or three points. And very likely just zero. I mean, if this is all, then forget it. And that does it, because now he's dead any way you look at it. Well, I probably shouldn't have done that, but there's nothing in red. Now that I think about it, uh, I probably should have just I had lethal, right? I, I should have pigment stormed and yeah, I had lethal. I don't know why the hell he did that. I thought this, I thought he had tapped and this was tapped. Why did I think? I don't know, maybe I'm missing something, but I didn't, re I didn't even realize that he had a creature untapped. Don't think we're losing. Yeah, stupid play by me. I mean, f five down, but man, that, that was uh, definitely a punt there. No reason to waste a turn, give the opponent a turn to catch up. I mean, he could have had like draconic intervention. That No, nah, actually, if he had draconic intervention, I don't think he had a seven, seven mana card in the graveyard. It wouldn't have killed the seven, seven. So I don't know, maybe we still, maybe this, maybe the opponent still had zero outs, but you never know. Plays like that definitely lower your win rate. And the, the, again, the best thing you can do to not making those plays is understanding when you made that mistake. Sometimes, you know, you're you're playing fast and you're thinking one step ahead and you're not realizing that you're attacking with a 9-9 into, uh, into an untapped creature or however big my creature was at that point. I don't remember, I don't remember exactly.
Copying shock doesn't feel very strong here. So I'm just gonna get this out of the way. And then I'll just use arcane subtraction to gain life and draw a spell for next turn. Expanded Anatomy, however, is much stronger. So if he taps out here, then I will copy Expanded Anatomy and have eight, eight power worth of, uh, eight damage worth of power in the air. Well, I don't really want to do that with untapped mana, so I guess I'll just attack. Brian books, sure. Hmm. <laughs> it feels weird to do nothing. He could have snake skin veil, that would be annoying. We should just pigment storm and expanded anatomy here for next turn. Hmm. This doesn't really do anything, does it? it really doesn't. Okay, so he's just dead. Divide by zero, what, what's going on? It's got to be divided by zero. Quandrix command. No, that's not going to work. Come on. That's not going to work. So. <clears throat> yeah, because then in response, I just do this and that's game all right so there i didn't miss lethal i just wanted to make sure that there's nothing i'm missing was that six down now 
One more left or two more left? I think one more left. Yeah, so that was six in a row. Zero losses though, that's pretty pretty nice. And let's see if we can get seven and all run, which is actually kind of tricky to do. Even, even at these um, rankings, like you're still losing whatever, even if you're losing 25% of the time, it's you're kind of expecting to lose one in four. And that's like Kyle Ross level win rate. So I might as well enjoy it while it lasts before I get up to some of the higher tiers. Yuck. But I can toss this in a pinch and then I'll have access to electrolyze. So I don't think I'm just gonna get run over here. I think this is barely keepable, but keepable nevertheless. Nice. Leech fanatic, stone rice spirit. All right. Usually people pick heated debate. Expanded anatomy. Yeah, well, good, good play, good play. <clears throat> so do I want to be greedy and play Quandrix Pudge Mage before Electrolyte? The answer is no, because I want to hit my line drop. So let's kill this. Hopefully we can avoid a God's willing here. All right, good. We got our land. I kind of just want to kill everything and hit my land drop. So let's go. Just since I can't cast expanded anatomy, let's just discard it and kill. In this thing, and then also create a valve burst. Kill that thing. Not the best turn, but uh, setting up for like a maelstrom muse into an explosive welcome. Uh, that's a little bit annoying. That that changes the clock, but it's not not the end of the world. Yeah, because if this lives next turn, we can go like Quandrix Punch Beige in Enthusiastic Study. Even though we can't attack with Prismari Pledge Mage. Well, what can I say? Oh, he's doing it. Now we need a burying box because that that would deal with the problem that we have at present. Good. 
So let's see, what if I, what if I cast enthusiastic study? No, that wouldn't do anything. I think we need to just frost tricks there, right? If I have an un, if I had an untapped source of red, then I could have fired this off as well. But oh well. Ooh, we can beat that. So let's see. So if I cast Enthusiastic Study on Maelstrom Muse pre-attacks, I get a five mana discount, which would make this three mana, but I'm still one short to cast it. So that's not gonna work. If I cast Enthusiastic Study pre-combat on like this thing, it's not gonna work either because it's not lethal and you can crack back for lethal and that could be bad. So the play was the play. I guess maybe this is the play. I'm gonna chump the Stone Rice Spirit with uh, Frost Trickster. But see, now I have enough on the crack pack to have lethal. And if I get a land, then this, I can fire this off as well for six. So I don't really care about blocking here. Although, what can he have? Yeah, I mean, he can have the, the pump spell that can kill me. He can cast the Vigilant spell on Golem. Cut, well, that wouldn't be lethal. Anyway, I'm still just gonna jump here. Because if my plan works, then... Yes. So let's see, I go expanded anatomy on Maelstrom News. Attack with everything. I don't think he's got much. And then we can play a uh, Spectacle Mage as another as another blocker. Again, I'm one mana short for this. But I'm pretty sure I live here. Because as long as Maelstrom use survives, I can fire this off. And then even if this dies, I can cast this if I get one more land. Since Spectacle Mage gives a discount. Well, there we go. Aggressiveness and lack of reluctance worked. And uh, seven and oh, seven in a row. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, we'll do another one soon.